Here are five different Mac OS tricks for 2023 that very few people know about. Let me show you what they are. All right, welcome back to the video. So what I wanna do in this video is I kinda go back to my roots. I have about 500 different videos of all Mac related stuff, tons of products, hubs, computers. I like to do a little bit of training too. So what I got today is five different tips and tricks, you know, built into Mac OS that you can do like and, and learn in like two seconds. And there's gonna be five of them that are gonna really help you with your workflow. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get into them. Just go through them one through five. I'm gonna share my screen right over here. And uh, tell me at the end of it if you've learned them, if you know about these, if you've ever performed any of these tasks. They're gonna be super quick and super easy to learn. That's always my kind of goal here. And I'm gonna keep it to five so you can learn them really easily. Without further ado, let's get into it again. One through five, let's go. All right, let me set number one up. So let's say you have a file that you definitely don't wanna kind of ruin the original on. So you always wanna make sure you don't overwrite the original or delete the original or, or even just you know, somehow change the original file. What does that mean? Well, you can put a lock on it and all that stuff, but maybe you still wanna be able to view it and stuff. So let me just show you over here. Look at my screen. Here's an example folder. See it right over here. I'm gonna open that up. And here, here's just one file in this folder. So very simple. What you wanna do is you basically you click on it and then you right click on the file and then you make sure your right, clips, click, right click is enabled. And then you go down here to get info. See it there? And I'm gonna bring this screen right over here so you can see it. So in here, there's something called stationary pad. See it right there? What you wanna do is click that and then basically close that out. So again, you basically right click on it, click get info, and then make sure stationary pad is selected. Now what you do is, let's say you wanna go in and you're gonna view this file, watch what happens right here. If I double click the file, it's just a graphic, a graphic comes up, but go back, it made a copy of it. So it made a copy of the original. So let me open it again. It's gonna make another copy. So anytime you open up that file, it's gonna make a copy of it, just so you always have that original in case you overwrite that copy, right? So it's really cool. Now, if you wanna go ahead and take that off though, you just right click on it again, get info, uncheck stationary lock. You can also lock it here as well, or stationary pad, I'm sorry. You can also lock it here as well though, which will put a full lock on it. But I like this because then it definitely makes sure that you don't kind of alter that original file. All right, number two is one of those ones that you may not ever know it exists, but it's kind of cool, kind of not, but at the same time, you're a power user if you know it, so watch this. So over here, let's say I have a Google search going on and I wanna search for the Super Bowl, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Super Bowl. You'll see this, this comes up. It's got the fireworks going off over here. And I scroll down, so I'm looking for specific information. I click on this NBC, what is it, NBC Sports here, and I keep scrolling down, and all of a sudden I get kind of sidetracked, right? And I'm looking at basketball scores or horse racing or you name it, right? Whatever I'm looking at is in here. And now I'm like, oh geez, I wanna get back to that original search. I forgot what I searched in Google, but I actually liked all the results and I wanted to go to the next one, but I don't wanna click back 100 times because I'm so deep into this. All you have to do basically is go up to your kind of top menu bar up here, go to uh, history right there, and then go to search results snapback. See it right there, search results snapback. Click that, now watch what happens. It automatically took me back to that Google search, back to the link I clicked on. If I scroll up, I can see exactly what I searched in Google. So I don't have to click back all the time. It takes me right back to the beginning of that search. Pretty cool. All right, number three is one of those things you might not think is useful until you actually see it. So look at my screen over here. So let's just say I have a note here. I created a quick note in, in the notes and in, in built into Mac OS, the notes application. So once I'm in notes application, I created a note. Now if I double click on it, you're gonna see it brings up a window here, see it here? So that window is right there and it's a little box you can take notes on. But let's just say I wanted to go onto the web and take notes and just type them in here as I'm looking through the web. The problem with that is if I bring up Safari, watch this, Safari will cover up that little box, right? And then anything I put on top of it covers up that little box. Then I gotta move everything around, I gotta click on the box, and then if I move this, you know, obviously it covers up the thing again. So all you have to do really that stops this from happening so I can take notes and look at the web at the same time is make sure you click on this little box here. You go up to, let me just see here, window, and then let me just see, actually it is window here, and then you go float on top. See it right there, float on top? It's right there under the windows and you click on it. Now this box doesn't look like it changed, but it did. Now watch, if I click on this, it's, it keeps that box on top. If I click on this, it keeps that box on top. See that box, it didn't go behind everything. So now I can move this over here. I can scroll down, take my notes over here, 
on the web as I'm looking through the basically anything I want to find or research on the web, and I don't have to keep bringing that window forward. Um, I believe it's got a couple different. I believe I'm, I'm on actually um, Monterey here because I do have a lot of different Macs. And I do testing on different things. I believe if you you might be say keep on top in some cases. I think on Ventura it says keep on top, but it says float on top here. So just look for float on top, keep on top. It's under that window column, and uh, and then you can float this and you can do all your notes, save them, and then basically you're all good to go. All right, number four is actually super useful. So watch this one. Look at my screen over here. So here I am in Finder, right? Everyone uses Finder. Let's say you want to get to a folder really quickly. Instead of putting it over here or drilling down on things, you just always want to get to a certain folder super quick when you open up Finder. Here's how you do it. Here's the folder I want to get to all the time. This is just an example. So if I drag this up to this menu bar, it just goes away. Look at that. So, But the key here is you want to hold down Command, drag it up here, and then just drop it in, just like that. So hold the Command button. It drops right in there. Now if I click on this, all my files are in that folder right there. You can see it. Perfect. Now I can not only add folders up here, I can add individual files by doing the same command line. And I can also go ahead and do not only files, but I can also do applications. The cool thing is this is what everyone worries about. So let's say I want to remove this. All all I have to do, now watch what happens. It's going to be a little bit of a smoke. I'll zoom in on it. If I try to just drag this, I can't drag it anywhere. Obviously, if I click on it, it's going to open it up. But if I go, if I try to drag it, it won't come out of there. Same thing though. I got to, I got to hold basically the command key here. So basically, I'm going to hold the command key, drag this down. Now watch what happens. So I'm holding the command key. I have this. I'm going to let go. See that little smoke there? It kind of destroys it. But everyone's like, oh, did it destroy all my files? No, because my files are still here. And if I click on them, they're all safe. It's just a matter of removing it from the menu bar up there. That's all it did. So it's kind of a cool thing to add a whole bunch of folders that you go to regularly up there. It just adds functionality and how quickly you can get to stuff. All right, here's the fifth and final one. So watch this. So let's just say, you know how if you have a window like this and you drag it from this corner, you know how basically you're basically dragging it all the way up to the upper left. See that? Like only the information in the upper left corner is going to be there because I'm dragging it that way. See that? It's hard to explain, but let me just show you. You can actually kind of shrink in from the center. Let me show you how what that means. So here it is again. This time I'm going to hold the option key down. Now watch what happens. I hold the option key down. I see how both ends come in and it, and it keeps everything centered. See that? Now I'm going to let go of the option key right here and watch what happens. Everything goes up to the left, right? But now I'm going to hold the option key down and it centers everything. So what it basically does is it basically kind of moves everything in from the center instead of going from the bottom right up to the left. You got to try it to see what it means. Go ahead and try it. You hold the option key down when you kind of resize a window, but then you let go of the option key and see what the difference is. I guess just try it out and you'll know what it, you, you got to just do it before you know kind of what it does. And once you know it does something, you might use it quite often. All right, anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. Those are the five tips for today. Hopefully you guys like this kind of videos. Hopefully let me know if you knew of any of these or you didn't know of any of them. Put it in the comments if you did or if you know of any kind of crazy other ones out there. I just like to do these from time to time because it keeps me interested in Mac OS and just kind of fooling around with the Mac. These aren't always going to be useful, but it does help save some time from time to time. And uh, at the end of the day, I guess that's what it's all about, right? So anyways, Hope everyone's having a great week and uh, I'll talk to you soon. I don't know if you guys can hear some plows out there. We've been having a lot of snow, so there's a lot of noise out there. I apologize about that. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.